Hearty shalom to you, Jeffrey Seif here. I know a lot of people who have been hurt by people. It's really, to my reckoning, unavoidable. We live in a world today where people don't just have problems, there seems to be something problematic about the human condition and something problematic with people. It's not just a today problem, by the way. You find it in early Genesis and things haven't changed much and we deal with disappointment. That just comes in the natural. But in the supernatural, God has an anecdote for that. You know what it is? New friends. Uh, the reason why I mention that is in Acts chapter 15, we had a little bit of a church, but Paul, no doubt, is uh, reeling with a bit of discouragement. Him and Barnabas have come to blows for the moment and gone different directions. They're going to put it back together again later. So Paul carries on, makes a new friend, and hits the road. We're told in chapter 16, verse 1, he came to Derby and Lystra. Now, we're in... Asia Minor in antiquity, Turkey in modernity. Uh, he is traveling over land, and we're really in proximity to the center of Turkey, Asia Minor back then. And we're told, as we read on, that there was a disciple there named Timothy, son of a woman who was a Jewish believer and a Greek father. This person, we're told in verse 2, was well spoken of by the brothers, at Lystra and Iconium. You know, there's, there's nothing like a good reputation. People rely on a good resume, and sometimes, you, you know, you look at the print, and when you do some investigation, you realize things aren't as they seem. Um, I know this just in another world, working in police sciences, where you do investigations, where I have had opportunities to do background investigations. Uh, and you look into people and circumstance, and you find that Things aren't always as they seem. Uh, there's nothing like a good reputation, though, to, uh, to galvanize your enthusiasms about someone. I mention that is everybody's talking about this guy, Timothy. This guy is just the cat's meow. Reputation is very important in ministry. We're told in verse 3 that Paul wanted this man to accompany him. See? Um, you know, people are looking for good people. A lot of people are lonely and they wonder, how can I do to, what can I do to solve this problem? Well, be a loving person. <laughs> you know, it sounds counterintuitive because if you're lonely particularly, you're just wanting to be able to, you, you want to heal, you want to absorb the energies of kind dispositions. Uh, but they're not just going to show up in your apartment when you're sitting there by yourself day in and day out. You got to get out in the world and be a player in the drama. You have to be an actor in the human endeavor. And, uh, you know, the Bible says a liberal man will be enriched and he who waters will himself be watered, or she who waters will herself be watered. That uh, we want to be a giving, loving, caring, sharing kind of person. You know, Jesus said, Yeshua said, give, expect nothing in return, and you're going to be repaid at the resurrection of the just. But listen to me, you don't have to wait to then necessarily because... Uh, there's good news from ancient Jews when it comes to those who pay their dues in the loving business. What goes around comes around. And here's Timothy just being Timothy. Uh, but then Paul gets word of him. Paul experiences him and he says, you know what? You know, I can use a guy like you. Listen, if you have a little love of the Lord in your heart, don't just keep it in your heart. You know, be a social creature. Get out there in the world. Get that reputation going. Get yourself known to be a caring, sharing person. You might run into some Pauls out there on the highways of human experience. Well, this guy did. And uh, Paul looked at him and he said, no, that's what I'm talking about. You know, I can use a guy like him. We're told then that he took him and circumcised him for the sake of the Jewish people. This sounds counterintuitive. People look at Paul saying, Paul kind of jettisoned the whole Jew thing for the new thing. You know, the founder of Christianity. But what's interesting is this guy was half Jewish and half Gentile, but he wants to take him on the journey, but because he still has Jewish blood in his veins, you know, he has a Jewish mom, he's understood to be Jewish, so as not to offend, let's, let's, let's be circumcised. It's interesting. Paul is carrying messages with him at the time that were determined back in Acts 15 that individuals who were non-Jewish needn't adhere to the promulgations of the Mosaic economy. They don't need to keep it save for, you know, not, eat, not sacrificing to idols, etc. You can read it in the 15th chapter. Uh, it's not incumbent upon non-Jews to play Jews. But the question here is, what about this guy who is a Jew? 
but was kind of living in an assimilated lifestyle. No, Paul says, listen, I want you to live as a Jew. I mean, I want you to do that so as not to offend because that's who you are. And by the way, that's a kind of position that resonates with women and men of non-Jewish extract who've come to faith. People like me that, you know, we don't want to jettison the Jew thing for the new thing. We, we're comfortable with both. And uh, it looks like Paul was too. Now, never mind what Paul wanted. Timothy was quite the guy to let Paul do it. Uh, to let that happen, you know, he, uh, um, I'm sure it was painful for a couple days, <laughs> uh, and, uh, but, but he did it, you know, sometimes uh, to serve the Lord, to get to the next level, we go through certain measured inconveniences, they don't kill us, uh, there's an old saying, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and that's the God's honest truth, but uh, um, we're told here that he was circumcised, and uh, in verse 4, as they were traveling through the cities, they then handed down the rulings that had been decided upon by the emissaries and elders. And by the way, I think that's what ministry ought to be. Personally, I think that a lot of rabbis and reverends are just way too creative. Now, I don't want to stymie creativity, um, but I don't want to reinvent the message. Uh, I believe that I'm tasked as an ordained minister. I'm tasked with handing down the decisions uh, that were decided upon. Uh, I'm tasked with handing down other opinions. That's why I don't think there's any grounds for boasting in ministry. You know, I, uh, you know, I have a job as a, as a Bible college seminary professor, among other jobs. And uh, this morning, um, with a new class, I uh, told them, you know, well, hello, Dr. Seif. You know, how can you really be a doctor of God at the end of the day? I mean, it's kind of stupid. Okay, so I read a few books. You can see some of it, you know, and I have them strategically placed behind me to create the impression I know what I'm talking about. Uh, but really, how can someone be a doctor of God? It really is kind of stupid at the end of the day. Um, there's not a lot of grounds for boasting in ministry because f for me, I'm not inventing something. I'm just teaching what was already articulated. And in fact, if you look at the Tree of Life version of the Bible, um, what we're looking to do is hand down the decisions, the perspectives of the emissaries, uh, of the apostles, principally, though not exclusively. I mean, that's what the New Testament is. It's in effect uh, what constitutes the authoritative uh, teaching of the essence and substance of Jesus' sayings and then the application of them for Christian consumption, for those that want to walk in the new halakha, that want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus the Messiah and call themselves Christian or believer. I don't care what language we use, quite frankly. But what I do care about is that people pass on the instructions and those that have supported uh, the Tree of Life Bible Society have helped facilitate the passing on in a very unique, timely uh rendition of biblical text. Well, we're told here that they traveled on, Timothy's joined, and they go about strengthening the size communities, uh, and the faith is increasing on a daily basis. Listen, if there's a takeaway from this, I mean, there's a few applications, there's a few ways I could close on this, but I want to close the way that I opened on it. I talked about how um, Paul here is just beginning in chapter 16 in the aftermath of a painful split. Sometimes when your friends leave you, it looks like it's all over. But what's interesting is Paul kept on going and then he made new friends. Now, I believe that one old friend is better than 20 new ones. I mean, in that sense, I just certainly like those old friends. But, you know, sometimes people fade away. They peter out. They betray. It's been known to happen. Listen, keep the doors open for new friends coming your way. It seems to me that uh, God's got plans, he's got people, he's got new friends for people like me and you. Hey, thanks for being a friend of the Tree of Life Bible Society. Why don't we do this again next week? Jeffrey Seif, signing out. God bless.